67, 49, 167, 67, 49. Okay, x squared minus 2x equals 2 x squared minus 2x equals 2, and this is, it says by completing the square. We have not done that yet. We only looked at taking square roots. So, this is, a perfect, this is a perfect example, let's do it. And um, here's the idea. What are we trying to do here is, so this is method three of all four, you know, you remember four methods of solving quadratic equations. By factoring, by taking square roots in specific situations. And this is our third method, completing the square. And if you remember last time I said, completing the square, I will never, ever, ever think of applying unless I'm forced to. This is a useful method, but not for solving quadratic equations. One reason is that this method alone will not solve the equation. Okay? We will have to go back to method two when we're done. Because alone, complete the square will not solve the equation. So what are we trying to do is this. At the end of the day, <coughs> I want to change that equation to look like this. If I manage to do that, I completed the square. So this is just a simple number. It does not have x in it, just a, a number. Here, there is x, whatever expression, squared equals a number. If I manage to do that, then I'm looking at this and I say, now what? Oh, now what? I go back to method 2 and take the square root from both sides. So that's why I'm saying this is not a useful method. It's very important, though, for something else in this course. OK. So now, I have to look at these two terms and ask myself, because I studied the special products from day one, last Tuesday, when we first met, I know that I have to have a term that I square to get this. There must be a minus in the middle. And I have to have a term that I square to get the last Term, there are three terms, a binomial squared, three terms. First term squared minus 2 times the first times the second would be this, plus the second term squared. I know this sounds difficult. It's not. I'll also show you the shortcut. So let's establish what I have to have here that I squared to get this. What can it be? Because the middle coefficient is negative, I will have to have negative. Right? So stay with me. So there is an x and there is a minus. Now the question is 2 times the first times the second has to be this. 2 times x times whatever must equal 2x. What should the number be? Of course. There is no other way. The number must be 1. Now, here's a question. One more time. The first term squared from the first year plus. The first term squared minus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared. What should I have here? Plus what? One more time. Correct. First term squared minus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared plus plus 1. I have to add 1 to both sides. I cannot add 1 to only one side. That would be incorrect. I will destroy the balance. So then this changes into x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 2 plus 1. So notice that I added the 1 to both sides. I am allowed to. The solutions would not change. But now, I know that this is a perfect square, and I know that this is 3. From the first day of classes, we reviewed those special products because they are going to be with us forever. That's why I did that the first day. So what do I write in here such that when I square this binomial, I'll get three terms, and the three terms will be... What do I write? Do you all agree with x minus 1? It's already here. We knew that. It's x minus 1. 
First term squared minus 2 times the first times the second plus the second term squared. That's why, for this and for many other reasons, I beg you to stop foiling this. That's the reason why. Because otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. Not because I want you to use my method. It's because it's required, really. Good. Now I'm looking at it. It's beautiful. All this work is awesome. But now what? I haven't solved the equation. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So I have to take the square root from both sides. I get x minus 1 equals. And if I forget something crucial, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> that was good. So then this is 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. And this is the method of completing the square. And now I will give it a shortcut. So let's go back for a second. How did we really get this number? What did we do to the little quicker? Divide it by 2 and square it. That's how we got this number. So let's write the shortcut for completing the square. So step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4. The method of complete the square has four steps. In the first step, we identify the middle coefficient. Can anyone go back and identify the middle coefficient? It has to be the coefficient after we present everything in descending order. It has to be the coefficient that represents the middle term. The coefficient of the middle term. Middle coefficient. What is it? Perfect. In step two, I have to divide it by 2. OK, let's divide negative 2 by 2. When I divide it by 2? Very good question. It's because of the special product. First term squared plus 2 or minus 2, the first times the second. OK, okay let me write it again. So a plus b or a minus b squared is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's the reason why. We divide by 2. Right? OK, so let's go back. So I divide negative 2 by 2. What do I get? 1. Very good. Negative 1, indeed. In step 3, I square negative 1. What do I get? Perfect. And this is what I add to both sides. 1. I add 1, this 1, to both sides to complete the square. We're going to have more examples in a minute. Any questions for me? OK, let's see how this works with a shortcut. OK, OK, my page 2. Uh, let's choose another, like uh, 50 on the same page, 167. And then if you have other questions, I'd like to stop and answer your questions, OK? If you have anything else for me. Uh, x squared plus. Um, I'm going to change it a little bit. x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. It's the same equation that I just moved 12 to the other side. Because I want you to see that this number can be moved from the very first step to the other side. I don't need it. So let's identify the middle coefficient. Divide that by 2. Square it. What do I have to add to both sides? That's it. So be very careful how you add 4. Not behind this, and you cannot combine these. I, I wanted to specifically change the equation. So you see that it will be an error or a mistake if you would combine these two. I can't do that. I have to move 12 to the other side because this is a perfect square. With this, it's not going to be a perfect square. So now, can anyone give us the perfect square and 12 plus 4 is 16? Can anyone give us the perfect square on the left-hand side? Very good. OK, perfect. It's beautiful. We worked very hard to complete the square. Now what? Take the square root. So we have x plus 2 equals, and I cannot forget, plus or minus 4. And x equals negative 2 plus or minus 4. I have to separate them. 
I did not separate them here. It would have been a waste of time. However, my math lab may require you to write the first one, comma, the second one. So be careful. But on a test, on final exam, you don't need to separate them because we cannot further simplify them. So here, I have to separate them because we can simplify them. So the first solution is x equals. The second solution is x equals. What do I get? Negative 6 indeed. Sorry, there is no room here for me. x equals negative 6, obviously, and the other one is x equals a neg uh, positive 2. So one solution comes from negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6. The other one from negative 2 plus 4, which is positive 2. And this is the method of completing the square. Do you have anything else for me? Anything else? Other questions? How can you really tell the difference between doing this, completing the square like that, and just doing the normal factoring? Very good. Very good. The normal factoring um, requires us to find two factors whose product is the polynomial. Here, we are asked to find the two factors that are the same. Very good question, actually. OK? So when we complete the square, meaning that we have two factors that are identical, when we factor, it, it rarely happens unless we use a special product, unless we use um, a plus b squared or a minus b squared. That's a special case. And in those situations, the right-hand side is normally 0. When we get 0 here and we have x plus 2 squared, then it's a factoring situation. It's really not complete the square. It's a very good question. Awesome. I, I would have never thought of connecting the two. I would have not. You, um, I always tell my students, I'm hoping that you learn from me, but I learn tremendously from you. Well, this perplexed me from even last semester, too. It's like, how do you know the difference? Very good. First of all, you will never apply this method unless the problem says complete the square. You will never even think about it. It's useless, right? Because alone, it alone cannot do the job. You have to use taking square roots, which is the, first, the second method. Secondly, um, when you factor, unless you are asked to, to factor, if it takes more than 20 seconds to factor, forget it. Because we have the fourth method, which will take care of everything. So I will not worry about it. Complete the square is easier to function as. And I'll tell you this because I keep saying that when we get to, uh, in chapter 2, um, to talk about circles. When we get to complete the square for circles, that's what this is for. But we can apply it here, sort of. OK, very good question. Thank you. OK, anything else? Other questions for me? OK, method four. In that case, if you don't have anything else for me, quadratic formula. I strongly recommend study groups. I strongly recommend do not fall behind in your work. The first layer, a lot, I know I sound like a broken record, the first layer is to do these problems again. Second one is to read the book and they recommend the problems. And only then the homework. Because if you go directly to homework and say, oh, I got this idea, no problem. You will stumble from the very first problem and you'll get frustrated and say, I can do this. And I don't want that to happen to anyone. Okay? I don't want to leave anyone behind. I mentioned that many times. Quadratic formula. So uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. The equation must be in this form. The quadratic equation must be in this form, otherwise we cannot use the quadratic formula. What does this mean? The left-hand side is in descending order. Perfect descending order, of course, and 0 on the other side. Otherwise, we cannot use the quadratic formula. And here it is. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Yes, please. Um, the way I normally did it was instead of saying negative, I'd say opposite. Fine. Whatever because works for you. That's fine. Very good. Now, I want to draw your attention to this. Again, we have to remember. We have to commit to memory. If you practice 10 problems with this, you will remember it. 
Okay. I don't want to see one thing, which I've, I've seen almost every semester. Whatever B is, positive or negative, this number can be only, of course. So do not write negative 4 here. I'm not going to look at the problem. So if B is negative 4, when you square negative 4, what do you get? 16. Right. So I don't want to see negative 16 here. It will be incorrect. OK. Good. So now let's pick a problem uh, on page 167. Um, let's say um, x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals 0. And this, I pick problem 66 on the same 167. Okay, I need to identify, you don't have to do this, we're going to do it just the first time. I have to identify A, B, and C. I don't have to write them on the side moving forward, but at least let's do this the first time. A is? One. Yes, always remember, we take the number with the sign in front, whatever that sign is. B is? Very good. C is? No. Perfect. So now I can fill in carefully all the information in the Corati formula. Can anyone dictate? 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12 equals 0. Okay, one more time from the beginning. I'm sorry. That's okay. Eight. Very good. And then your plus minus. Excellent. And then your squared 8 squared. I want to write it already. Oh, you want to write it already? Yes. Um, uh, 64. Very good. Minus. Minus. I have the 4. I don't have to write the 1 anymore, and multiply it by 12, divided by 2 times 1. There is no need to write multiplying by 1, because it's not going to change anything. Good. Any questions now? OK. 64 minus 4 times 18. I want to show this also with a graphing calculator for a second. I, they did install that for me. Not where I was expecting it to see it, but it's okay. That's good. And I just want to show you how I put this in, I would put this in the graphing calculator. There is no need. I mean, these numbers are not that big and not a big deal, but I just want to show you how to put in the graphing calculator. Um, you must put parentheses around everything at the top and parentheses around everything you have under the square root. If the denominator has more than one term, then you have to put parentheses around the denominator as well. I'm going to put them, although there is only one term now. So um, left parenthesis, negative 8, when you put negative, when you start with a negative, you cannot use the operational negative, but you have to use the sign, the negative sign, which is this. And then 8 plus the square root, second and square root. The software does not require me to put parentheses, but some calculators do, some calculators don't. I will always want to be on the safe side, and I'm old-fashioned as well. So I'm going to put parentheses anywhere where I think they are needed. So 64 minus 4 times 12. Close the parentheses under the square root. Go outside, get outside of the square root, and close another parenthesis for the top this time. And then divide. There is no need for parentheses if it's only one term, but I will put them just now. Divided by 2 and close the parenthesis. And then press Enter. And I get whatever I get. I don't want to copy the whole thing or type in the whole thing again, so I'm going to do this. Second. And entry. And you will copy automatically everything I had. I will go back and overwrite plus into a minus. It will be much easier for you than for me on the software. So go back with second and entry. Second and entry. Second and entry. <coughs> and then go back and replace positive by negative overwrite it by the operational negative this time. Now, it is a mistake. I've seen some of my students doing a little bit piece of it at a time. They do the square root first, and then it lets you away, say, minus 8. No, no. 
We need to put everything all at once. Be careful how we put it in, however, right? Now, if we omit parentheses, we get something else. So please put the whole thing at once in the calculator. And now I press enter, and I get negative 6. So there are two options here. Any questions for me? Any questions? So I will say x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 6. Now when you get to these problems in my math lab, my, my, my math lab is if there is, for example, here the square of 48, you will have to simplify the square of 48. Because otherwise it will mark it, mark it wrong. So since I mentioned that, let's take a look at for a second at the square of 48. And here's how I would simplify the square of 48. There are several ways. Any questions on the previous problem? I see a head shaking, so I'm not sure. Are you okay? Any questions? Don't be shy. Any questions? Okay, so if you run across, for example, the square of 48, I will do this. I will say it's 16 multiplied by 3. That's one option. And then I will have the square of 16 times the square of 3. And the square of 16 is? So this is what uh, my math lab would ask you to do or to simplify the square of 48. So be careful when you get to these type of problems. Do we need another example with the quadratic formula? Yes? Please. Very good. Please choose. If you have your book, please choose anything you want from 47 through 64. Uh, I'm sorry, from 65 through 74. 71? 71 it is. So 71 on the same page. 71, 71. 4x squared, perfect pick. Perfect pick. So you, you earn your rights to pick moving forward. Good. What is the first step that I have to perform? I'm asked to use the quadratic formula here. What is the first step that I have to perform? Everything move to one side. Very good. So 4x squared minus 2x minus 7 equals 0. This is the mandatory step without which I cannot use a quadratic formula. Agreed? Okay. Uh, let's identify A. Let's identify B. And let's identify C. Very good. So then we are ready. The opposite of B. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Very good. Minus 4 times a times c. 4 times 4. I got to c, which is negative. Here's what I want to do in order to avoid a lot of parentheses. Did you see me? Did you see me doing something? Exactly. Only because I had a negative from the formula. And C was negative. I didn't want to write negative 4 times 4, parentheses negative 7, because I had to use parentheses. OK, so we have to simplify this. So this is 2 plus or minus. Any, any questions here? So how much is 4 plus 16 times 7? So 4 plus 16 times 7 is 116. So my first step is to write the square root of 116 divided by 8. And then I will have to look at 116 and try to simplify it as much as I can. OK, let's do it. I have trouble. I do this on my math lab already, and I'm pretty sure. But what I'm getting underneath the math is not really the math. It's not 116? No. OK, what did you get? That's, that's okay. Good. Perfect. So now we have to try and see if we can simplify 116. Any other question for me? Anything else? Okay. So let's take a look at 116. So um, in order to be able to simplify the square root, it is recommended. Any questions? Ladies, ladies, ladies. Any questions? Go ahead. Please. I'm learning from you as much, I hope, as much as you learn from me. Yes, go ahead. No, I just didn't, 
I don't know why you put the plus instead of Because I had a negative from the formula and 7 was negative. Otherwise, I would have had to use or write this. And I want to avoid too many parentheses. So instead of putting parentheses here, I changed this into plus. And I wrote this. For simplicity. Now, if you feel comfortable with that and putting minus, that's fine too. You will get the same answer. So now, I will use the prime factorization. You will learn this very fast. I always run out of room. Um, so the prime factorization of 116. To see how I can simplify, if, it's, if, if at all possible, the square of 116. So first of all, I see it's an even number. So I have to start with the first prime number, which is 2. I will say this is 2, and I divide 116 by 2, and I get 58. Nice. I see that 58 is an even number, so I will continue with 2. So I'll say 2, and I get 29. Uh, 19, I'm sorry. So, I, no, I have, oh, I'm sorry. 58, so uh, divided by 2, right? So, 29. 29. 29. I don't know. I Okay, perfect. 29 is the prime number. So then I know that the square root of 116 is the square root of 4 times 29. 2, 2, 29. So then I know that this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 29. And I know that the square root of 4 is? Two. Very good. So it's 2 to the square root of 29. Thank you. So I go back now to simplify the, uh, the answer. So it's 2 plus or minus 2 to the square root of 29 divided by 8. I will do something now to make a point that this is not possible, not allowed. If you simplify this 2 with this 4, with this 8 and get 4, this will be a terrible mistake. Never. Because I'm simplifying a quantity, a piece of a term, these are two terms, a piece of a term with a factor in the denominator, and that's not allowed. So please remember, never be tempted to do this. So I have two options here to simplify, and the, my math lab will ask you to simplify. Are you saying that never do factorization? No, I'm saying never simplify the two, which is part of a term, with part of a factor. So I'm saying you can do this. One option would be to factor out 2. What is left in parentheses? Plus, is plus or minus the square root of 29. Very good. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times the square root is 2 the square root. Of. Now I can, and I am allowed to simplify because I'm simplifying a factor. So the simplified form will be 1 plus the square root of 29 over 4. Another option would be to separate the fractions. Both are legitimate. Both will give us the same answer. It's up to you what you want to do. So the other option would be x equals 2 over 8 plus or minus 2 to the square root of 29 over 8. And now I can simplify each fraction by itself. And the answer will be 1 fourth plus or minus the square root of 29 over 4, because I'll simplify the same way I did. And these two are identical. So 1 plus or minus square root of 29 over 4 is 1 over 4 plus or minus square root of 29 over 4. Same thing. So one more time, the point I was making here, you cannot simplify a piece from a term with a factor. 8 in the denominator is a factor, but 2 at the top is a piece coming from one term. And we cannot do that. Other questions for me? Okay, so can we move forward then? So these were the four. I'm expecting you to come back on uh, Thursday and say, I want to look at this word problem with quadratic equations or that word problem with quadratic equations because you will encounter those. Moving forward, any questions for me? Any questions? Okay, 1.6. 1.6 is big. It's a big topic. It deals with a lot of other types of equations. So 1.6. I think this is my page 4. Other types of equations. Other types of equations. And there are many different types. 
So let's look at polynomials. Polynomial equations, I should say. Okay, I'm going to pick a problem. And um, if you looked at the, uh, at the handout carefully, I also on that uh, factoring handout I have. Any questions about that factoring handout? Did you finish it? Are you going to? Yes. Okay, please. Please form a study group. It will really help you if you can. Okay, here, so here is an example of a polynomial equation. Uh, let's say number two on page 185. And this is 5x to the fourth minus 20x squared equals zero. So the, the first thought that I have when somebody asks me to solve an equation is what? Say it again. What type it is. Because there are so many different types, we already looked at two, linear and rational. We'll have polynomial, we'll have um, radical equations, we'll have absolute value, exponential, logarithmic equations, um, what else? Um, uh, e equations quadratic in form. I mean, it's such a long list. I have to correctly identify it first. What type of equation is this? Thank you. It's right there. What is its degree? Four. How many solutions do I have to find, even if they're all the same? Four. Exact number of the degree. Perfect. Good. So after I identify it correctly, and after I write myself a note, four solutions. Do not forget. Four solutions, no matter what. Then I say to myself, OK, I ask myself, can I simplify this? How? Dividing both sides by? Um, five. Only 5. If you say by mistake 5x squared, then you will omit how many solutions? Four. 2 will go away. You can do that. So let's write this as a note. And remember, it committed to memory. Note, never divide both sides of an equation by the variable. Never. We never divide both sides of an equation by an expression having the variable or the variable itself. Never, ever. We will lose solutions if we do that. Perfect. But I do. I want to divide both sides by 5 because dividing both sides by 5 will not, will not change anything. So this is x to the fourth minus 4x squared equals 0. That I can do. 5, nobody will miss. Everything is good. So now I go back through my list of steps. I identified it's a binomial. Then I have to ask myself, is it in descending order? Greatest common factor? Yes. yes. Not simplifying, but greatest common factor, which is? Perfect. Awesome. And then? Good. What do I do with x squared minus 4? x plus 4x squared. Very good. Now I'm expecting four solutions, please. That's it. There are two factors <coughs> x. Two factors x will give us two solutions that are identical. It doesn't matter. I still have to present four solutions. Any questions? I'm sorry? Uh, I guess two, so two of them are zero. That's it. I still have to show four solutions. Uh, here's another one. Let's say number eight and move on after that. 9y cubed plus 8 equals 4y plus 18y squared. Now you'll see why we 
reviewed, we took the time to review factoring, so we don't stumble now. What type of equation is this? That's my first question. Very good, it's a polynomial equation. Um, I need to see the polynomial, it's all over the place, so what will I do now? What would you recommend? It's all over the place. So. Yes, very good. 9y cubed in the next term. Awesome, thank you very much. Very good, awesome. Plus 8 equals? Remember, if you forget the equal symbol and 0, you are changing the equation to an expression. That's crucial. OK, very good. So now I go through my list. It's a polynomial. It's degree good. How many solutions do I have to write no matter what? I make myself a note. Degree 3, 3 solutions. Very good. Uh, greatest common factor? One is not a common factor. Okay. Negative leading coefficient? No. How many terms? How many? Okay, perfect. What do I do with four terms? You separate. Grouping. The only method for four terms. The only method for two, four terms grouping. From the first two, what will you factor out? Nine y squared. Very good. What is left in parentheses? Very good. What do I have to have coming out from the other two? Perfect. Now let's look and identify sign and number or sign and factor. My marker is getting dry. Thank you. Good. So now what is the common factor that we pull out? What is left in parentheses? What do I do with 9, 1 squared minus 4, anyone? Good, very good. How? I'm going to go to the next page, sorry. So it's y minus 2 and 3y minus 2 and 3y plus 2. Awesome. So please identify three solutions so we can move on. Yes, I agree with negative 2. No, I don't agree with negative 2. I agree with positive 2. I agree. That, yep, very good. I agree with negative 2 thirds coming from here. I move 2 to the other side and then divide by 3, correct? And from here? Good. Any questions? Yes, please. Okay. So 3y minus 2 equals 0, 3y equals 2, y equals 2 thirds. Linear mm. equations, right? Everyone? Yes? Good. Uh, can we move on to the next type? Can we move on to the next type? Yes? Okay, the next type, number two, radical equations. So I'm going to pick, uh, let's say, number 18. If you have questions, stop me, please. Uh, 185. Any questions? x minus the square root of x plus 11? Of course not. Thank you. So x minus the square root of x plus 11 equals 1. Okay, the first uh, question I ask myself is, what is it? What type of equation is it? Radical. Good, it's a radical equation, obviously, because it has radicals in it. What do I do? Do we remember how to solve radical equations? OK, that's OK. How many radicals do we have here? One radical, very good. We want to isolate it. That's the first step. When we and then square. Awesome. So um, the first step is yes, I can move x to this side, but then I'll have a negative sign and x would be negative. So I'm gonna do this. I'm going to move the radical to the other side and one to the left. 
So I will say x minus 1 equals the square root of x plus 11. Why? Because I only have one negative sign. It's not that I'm afraid of negative signs, but it's easier to square. So the radical has a, neg has a negative sign in front. When I move it to the other side, it becomes positive. One is positive. When I move it to the left, it becomes negative. Are you comfortable with this step? Everyone? Good. So do, does anyone remember what the square root means? So if I have the square root of 2, this is 2 to which power? A fraction. It must be a fraction. If it's a square root, the power must be a fraction. Very good. So that's the reason why we will do what to both sides? Yes. What if I had the cube root of 2, which is 2 to which power? Very good. If I had that, what would I have done to both sides? Correct. So if I want to eliminate the square root, it's like eliminating power 1 half. I have to square both sides. Now be very careful, because the left-hand side and the right-hand side have to be squared as a whole, as a unit, not term by term. Let me emphasize this, because it's a common mistake. Let's talk about it. Is 2 plus 3, 5? Yes. But this will be incorrect. Because 4 plus 9 does not equal 25. So I don't want to see square here, square here, square here. Because that would be incorrect. Good. So now before you tell me what to write on the left-hand side, I will just say, remember our agreement on the first step. And now I'm waiting for you to tell me what to write on the left-hand side, please. X minus 1, X plus 1. Thank you very much. So it's okay. That's how we learn. You want to know how many mistakes I make? You don't. So a binomial squared has how many terms? Repetition is what we need to do, right? So that's why we repeat all this. That's why I started with this, because eventually it will sink in. I, I trust that that, that will be. So do we understand how we got x minus 1 squared to be this? No. Okay, let's go back to the first day of classes. Do we, do we have the handout? It's time to look at that. Do we have the handout from, from the first day? Do you have all of them? Okay, here it is. And this has to be reviewed. This is not just something we did and then forget about it. We just did it, okay? So, the first term minus the second term squared is the first term squared minus two times the first times the second plus, we have to correct that, plus the second term squared, b squared. Okay, so that's what we did here. The first term squared minus two times the first times the second plus the second term squared. Is this clear with everyone now? Make yourself a note. I did not study this. I didn't think it was that important. I will study it. That's all. That's all you have to do is put the time in it, and you will not forget it moving forward. Just make yourself a note. Well, I didn't think it was so important, but I will learn it. Okay, now on the right-hand side. What do we get on the, on the right-hand side? X plus 11. Now I have to ask myself again, what type of equation is this? And how do I solve it? Quadratic. quadratic equation. We just did this in the previous section. That's why we did that first and then rational, radical equations. What do I have to do? Well, how do I solve it? Say it again. Put it all on one side. Say it again. Put it all on one side. Of course. So s squared. I, mean, I bring x, so it's negative 3x. And I bring 11, and it's negative 10. Awesome. So once I say it's a quadratic equation, like this one, I have to set it equal to 0. Any questions? Please ask. Please ask. OK, now I have four methods. Let's discuss this. Will I take the square root? Of course not. This is not set up like that. I don't have a completed square and the number on the other. Don't worry about it. 
No taking square roots. Will I complete the square? No, never, unless I'm forced to. So I have two remaining procedures, either factoring if it takes like this, or quadratic formula. Which one? Good. I completely agree because it takes a second. It's a trinomial descending order, no greatest common factor, no negative leading coefficient, no special product, but one is the leading coefficient. So it should not be difficult. Ready? Good? Very good. The sum has to be negative 3. Positive 5 and negative 2 will not have the sum of positive 3. Is that clear? The sign is crucial here. So the product is indeed negative 10, and the sum is indeed negative 3. So now I would like two options from you. I run out of room here with this wall. OK, so very carefully now, look at how many questions, Mark, I put in there, just to remind you that whenever we solve a radical equation, we have to go back and check. These may work, both of them. One of them may work, or none. And you can say, but why? Because we squared both sides. The principle of powers is not a basic principle. It can create solutions that are not accepted. They don't work. So I'm going to start with 5. I go back to the original problem, and I make x 5. And let's see what I get. How much is 5 plus 11? Square root of 16. How much is 5 minus 4? Do you accept 5 as a solution for this problem? We have to. True. Yes, that's correct. Now I'm going to check negative 2. So this is negative 2 and this is negative 2. So how much is 11 minus 2? Nine. The square root of 9. Three. How much is negative 2 minus 3? 1. Nice, nice try. One more time. Negative 2 minus 3. Negative 5. Correct. So would you accept negative 2? No. It's called extraneous solution. It's a byproduct. So x equals negative 2 is a byproduct or extraneous solution. Unacceptable. Remember, we have to check these solutions in the original problem. If you check both solutions here, they will work. If you check them here, they will work. If you check them here, they will work. If you check them here, they will work. But who cares about this? We only care about the original problem. And one of them works in the original problem, and the other one does not. So the one that